Hey guys, welcome back. So with us returning to Philip K. Johnson's New Hulk series, we continue now with what's kind of turned into a murder mystery. So going forward, the Hulk's gotta find this supernatural killer who's been terrorizing the streets of New Orleans for centuries. So let's get into it. But first, if you're enjoying these videos, make sure to drop a like, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and don't forget to hit that bell up top to get all notifications so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. Alright, so coming back, we pick up after Bruce's battle with the Hulk, where at the time Bruce was trying his hardest to keep the Hulk from coming out. So to keep Charlie safe, just moments before this, he gave her some money and told her to meet up with him later. But like we saw, this eventually led to us seeing Charlie wandering in the nearby town, brushing shoulders with authorities, to then eventually make her way down into an old lady's dark and creepy cellar, where inside, Charlie made a number of disturbing discoveries, starting with a talking doll that had the soul of a young man trapped inside, followed by the reveal of this old lady actually being something far more sinister. Meanwhile, back over with Bruce, around this time, he was paid yet another visit by Betty, who's back again on the behalf of the eldest, asking Bruce to turn over the Hulk so they can have their lives back. But also during this time, she went on to tell him that Charlene Tidwell is not a concern anymore, which caused both Bruce and the Hulk to put aside their differences so they can go and save Charlie. And after this, the next thing we see coming in hot right towards Bourbon Street is the silhouette of the Hulk right in front of the moon because now he's made his way here in hopes of finding Charlie before it's too late. And of course, with the Hulk not having any idea of where to even start when it comes to looking for Charlie, he's just yelling at people, he's flipping cars over, you got people yelling and screaming, and at one point this dude's like, hey, we gotta call somebody, right? Only to get a police officer yell at him and say, like, who, stupid? The cops? It's the Hulk. All we can do is try to get out of the way. Which, yeah, I just appreciate that guy keeping it real. But after some time with the Hulk violently searching high and low, he eventually runs into Inspector Francis, who is clearly deceased and a bit all over the place. Because at first he's just talking about how he lost his badge, when the truth is he lost a lot more than that. And at first it's almost like this private inspector doesn't know that he's dead. But at the same time it's almost like one of those things where he's been dead for so long that he's forgotten the more practical things. So as a result he just continues to investigate strange murders in the area. And as times passed he's just lost himself more and more. But with how this goes, this guy, Inspector Francis. As he uncovers different pieces of evidence, things come back to him, and the story uses this to show us more about the mystery monster that we were introduced to in the last issue. And this starts out when the Hulk tells him that he's dead, because right there the inspector starts to remember, as he says, they're in the dolls. To where from here, the two of them are taken back through his memories, with the first stop being in 1873, February 25th at 5am, when the first victim was discovered. And this first victim was a young lady by the name of Annie, who just arrived the previous day on a ship that came in from Ireland to where after her body was found, Inspector Francis was put on the case. And at the time, he discovered that she had various incisions throughout her body, with portions of bone and hair removed. And just a few weeks later, another body was found in a similar state, though this time it was an older man with no family. And over the next several years, 29 more bodies in this same condition were discovered. But Inspector Francis didn't find this to be the most shocking part. Because after this, he ordered exhumations for the murder victims in the area, dating back over the past 40 years, only to find that their conditions and circumstances were identical. So he ordered for more to be done, going further back, closer to a century, where he found even more of these people died a similar death. And after this, they jumped forward three years later to 1876, where on the morning of October 19th, two uniformed officers caught what appeared to be an old woman disposing of a corpse. But after confronting her, she took off. So Francis went after her. But during this chase, she showed to have some unnatural talents. And back at the time, only Inspector Francis witnessed this because the two officers lost sight of the old lady. So eventually they just let it go. But during this chase, the creature dropped an item of interest that appeared to be a frozen Charlotte doll, approximately five inches tall, that resembled the corpse that was found, that was made from bone powder. And it was on that day when a reporter from New Orleans coined the killer's name, Frozen Charlotte. But for a moment here, we head back over to Charlie, who like we seen in the last issue, this little girl running for her life. And even though she's not aware of the history of this creature, 
She's seen enough up close to know that this thing is out here serving a fate that is worse than death. And the crazy thing is, as Charlie's making their way through this cellar, we're given a number of hints to indicate how old this frozen Charlotte actually is. And it's almost like the more we see, the older this creature appears to be. And as Charlie's trying to get away, she can hear the voice of the frozen Charlotte echoing throughout this cellar, with the creature saying, don't run, Poppet. Why so afraid, Charlene? That man can't harm you anymore which is referring to the police officer she decapitated. And it goes on to say, are you afraid because you saw young Nicholas on the grinding table? Nicholas is as safe as houses, darling. As safe as you will be. My brothers will never find any of you, nor will the ones below. It's no good running, my girl. These are the halls of my past, dug ever so long ago, and I know the sound of every stone. And boom, right there, she just lands in front of Charlie. And I'll admit, for a majority of this series, I do prefer the art of Nick Klein. But for some of these stories where we have guest artists step in, like for this one where we got Danny Earls, I will say for the last couple issues, he's very much captured the New Orleans vibe, which is kind of what they're going for here. With some of the different locations having different monsters, so a different artist will step in and kind of craft the tone. Where again, Danny Earls, he's done a great job with the New Orleans vibe. But in the moments like this, where we're trapped in the cellar with the frozen Charlotte, he nailed it with these scenes. In Matthew Wilson's color work, it almost tells a story of its own, with the cold contrast down here versus the warm colors up on the street. But yeah, as far as how things are going for Charlie right now, as we see, she doesn't have much of a chance of getting away. And when we go back to Bruce and Inspector Francis, as they continue the trip down memory lane, he lets the Hulk know how the two cops silently close the case, and they falsely announced that the killer was brought down, and they came to an agreement with the news outlet to keep any additional murders with this same description a secret. And as they continue to watch the inspector's story play out as it did back in the 1800s, we see that he followed the frozen Charlotte back to the cellar, just before the memories interrupted with a bloody slash. Which right here is really where he tries to remember more about what actually happened, and for a moment some of it starts to come back to him. He remembers the cold tunnels, harps, bells, a church altar, followed by the shadow of the frozen Charlotte, just before his own death. But this allows him to give the Hulk the details needed to know where to find Charlie. So the inspector tells the Hulk where to go, but also he lets him know that the victims were killed within three to four hours of their abduction, and that time frame was on the lower end for the young women. So he let the Hulk know that he should hurry, and it doesn't take long for the Hulk to find this place. But the funny thing is, while he's making his way through this cellar, at first there's complete silence, I mean, aside from the footsteps of a Hulk, but the first thing we hear him say is, stupid kid, which right there is just something that has grown to become a term of endearment between the Hulk and Charlie, starting from the beginning of the series. And I really like it, because it doesn't cause the Hulk to break character, it just works. But eventually with the Hulk looking for Charlie in here, he finds this huge altar in this room that is just full with countless porcelain dolls, which, you know, like we saw before, the frozen Charlotte has placed the souls of her victims inside of each and every one of these. And it's super creepy, because right after this, these dolls just start talking. And as the Hulk approaches the altar, for one, he steps right past the inspector's badge that he was looking for earlier, but as the Hulk approaches this altar, he just hears a ton of these tiny voices saying, help us, please help us, pleading for their lives. And in some cases, there are dolls here begging for death. <laughs> like, it's twisted. But right here, the Hulk then hears the voice of the frozen Charlotte saying, how found you the sanctuary of Nephili, mother of angels, which right there tells us who she fully refers to herself as. But the Hulk is just like the girl, give her back. So the creature's just like girl, there are many young girls in my care, each of them a treasure, angels, everyone. I saved them, all of them, from the world that would see them ruined and broken, from the immortals who would pass upon them their vicious judgment. I tell you, you will not have a single one, which now sets us up for the fight between the Hulk and Nephili, the mother of angels, who may have just taken the top spot as far as the most twisted monster in this series so far. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And so now real quick, I want to give a special shout out to all the patrons. Thank you guys for all of your support. And for anyone who's new here and wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below where you can go to patreon.com slash dope spill. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And we'll do it again on the next one. Alright. Later.